Hi everyone, welcome back to our video series on Firepower Appliances. In this video we're going to focus on ASA application running in failover and FTD application running as NGIPS. We're going to put those two together in a complementary design. First video in this series is going to give you an overview of this setup, then we're going to look at resiliency. We are using our Firepower 4150 appliance that you see out of the range of appliances we offer. This appliance as other Firepower appliances like 4100 and 9300 in these series use chassis manager to install ASA or FTD application and set up all of the port channels. In this case with failover ASA we will be setting it up on the CLI in the actual application unlike with the previous video where we were setting up clustering through the chassis manager as well. In ASA failover we have a cross-connected 10 gig link between two chassis used for failover link and LAN, syncing our connection state, syncing our configurations, and monitoring active standby mate operation. We have on the left our primary unit and on the right is the secondary unit. They each have their own unique VPCs going into a pair of Nexus 5000 switches. So let's take a look at this design on the board. In this design we're going to use four Firepower 4150s, a pair with ASA application in failover and another pair with FTD application running as NGIPS. On top of ASAs here you can see two different VPCs. Uh, ASA1 is paired up with FTD1 with single attached port channel, the same for the pair 2. And on the bottom of FTDs we have another VPC into the switches. One advantage of using Firepower appliance here with FTD is that we can terminate LACP for those port channels on the appliance and what we can take advantage of there is actually doing a port pairing in inline IPS mode between the top and bottom port channels extending link propagation there. So we have two different paths here on the left we have an active path if anything fails here we're going to switch over to our path on the right. So as you saw here, we are using the same Firepower 4150s, a pair of them with ASA application here and complementing that with standalone NGIPS running FTD application. Let's take a look at our connections. North of ASA we have port channel 10 with ports 1 and 3 and pairing that with switch side VPCs 110 and 111 taking ASA1 ports to ETH11 on each switch and ASA2 ports to ETH13 on each switch. Let's take a look what that is shown in our ASA1 chassis manager port channel 10 the two ports and two ports and here if we take a look at ASA consoles we see our failover configuration for our primary unit and failover configuration for our secondary unit. We're using ETH18 on each unit for failover link. You can see also that port channel has a 900 VLAN sub interface that is shared between the two units. If we review our switch configuration now. Switch 1 on the left we have 10 and 11 port channels taking respective ports and putting that into VPC 10 and 11 that you see here. Going back now between ASA and FTD units we have port channel 20 on ASAs taking ports 5 and 6 and we have a single attachment of those port channels to port channel 10 on FTDs taking ports 1 and 3. Taking a look at the chassis manager here ASA1 has ports 5 and 6 in PO20 same on ASA2 now FTD has that north 
PO10 taking ports 1 and 3, the same for FTD2 here. Now we can look at the FTD attachment on the bottom as well here and take a look at that port channel 20 taking ports 5 and 6 into switch VPCs 130 and 131 that you see there. So you can see that port channel on the bottom here for both FTD1 and FTD2. What we are doing then on our FMC, we're taking those two port channels. This is FTD1, sees the two port channels, marks them inside one and outside one, and we're placing them in an inline pair. These two port channels are now in an inline pair, propagating link state and having the setting for fail open if the snort is actually busy or down. The same configuration is done on FTD2. Quite simple to put these port channels together. Same inside and outside, the same inline set and the same settings. If we look at the policy itself, we can have a blanket policy for both of these IPSs that are active passive path or we can have some specific policies applied using VLAN tags that you see here for both uh, 920 and 925. So let's take a look at our switch configurations here. We have port channels 30 and 31 on each switch taking respective FTD1 and FTD2 ports and then we put them into VPCs 130 and 131. So now let's take a look at our logical diagram. We have our outside host on a shared VLAN 900 where two contexts on the ASA in routed mode are inspecting that traffic and passing it to unique VLANs on the inside. You see here on 920 and 925 VLAN tags. This tagging actually comes through IPS uh, tag is not changed and we have a couple of hosts on the inside on these unique VLANs. Now we're going to verify that connectivity between these outside hosts and inside and uh, conclude our overview of this setup. What I have here is three terminals into host A, B, and C. Host A is my outside host and the other two are actually on the inside on two unique VLANs here. Just to display what connectivity or what IP assignments they have there. What we're going to try here now is we're going to attempt a, a ping between uh, host A to B and we can see that that's successful. And here on my ASA, I want to show you what contexts I have in place. So I have uh, three contexts. One is admin, and I have my two contexts I indicated earlier, sharing outside VLAN 900. If we go into context one, I see the IP addresses in place. I see two ARPs for my outside A unit, uh, host A unit, and also um, host B on the inside for this context here. If I look at the connection here, I'm not seeing that uh, ping show up. Um, but if I try, for example, an SSH connection, I will see that SSH connection show up. The reason is that ICMP inspection is turned on and that ping is actually quickly opening and closing the connection on the ASA itself. So SSH connection is in place and looking at the standby unit here if I look at the connection I see that there is a standby backup connection for my SSH as well. Another item that I could open up here is I can uh, try a iperf connection to go through just uh, UDP. I can see my UDP connection also on this context. If we switch to context 2 and 
try to first ping context2 uh, through the context2 from host A to host C. I do have ping connectivity if I attempt my SSH connection. I see that SSH connection show up again on the standby. I should see the same SSH connection in place and if I attempt now from my host C to do a um, for example an SSH connection, another one, um, I will see those respective connections show up including the ARPs for those units right, um, on both active and standby units. So that is my connectivity tested through my ASA coming through my ASA from host A to B and host A to C respective context on ASA and their FTD inspections as well. If we take a look at our FMC to see what events had been seen um, on FTD, so we have seen our SSH connections show up and one important thing is to look at which device this was all on since our ASA1 is primary only FTD1 is going to be seeing these connections so we had seen our ICMP, UDP, SSH connections all show up through here. So this concludes our overview of our pair of ASAs running on Firepower 4100 appliances and complementing that design with FTD application on same appliances running standalone and pairing up with ASAs. Thank you for watching and hope this was useful.